Howdy. Howdy, bitch. What it do, baby? What it does? Yes, we're live. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Coming Up for Air, an <laughs> introspective podcast. Bitches. I'm your co-host, Jackson. I'm your co-host, Timothy, Brendan, him, that motherfucker with the beard. Welcome back. Gang shit, no lame shit. Um, hey, if you, hope y'all are doing well. If you're still with us, bro, or you're just now listening, I know some people kind of like do the thing where like they'll li- <laughs> they'll listen to uh like just whatever is like most recent. Nobody ever stops listening. I would hope it would be fantastic, but, uh, no, like, you know how, like some people just listen to like what most recent episodes. So if you're just, if you're just now listening to this or watching this, um, appreciate you. If you've been listening to us also appreciate you. Hope everyone's having a great day. I do the thing with my podcast where, um, if it's a new podcast and it's not story based, I'll start at the most recent, like couple episodes and just like go top one and then back like three or four and if i'm like yeah i fuck with this podcast then i'll go all the way to the beginning and then i'll make my way to that oh, so yeah. i can see the progression that's kind of fire that's kind of lit it's my good way of like not wasting my complete time with the podcast and knowing that like it gets to this point that i like so oh yeah and well, then yeah. if like the beginning's unbearable or too many episodes then i'll be like oh, i'll just go like 200 episodes back yeah <laughs> i feel it well yeah Either way, appreciate you guys. Um, Good way to feel progression instead of regression. Yeah, you know, fuck them. What? Um, okay. <laughs> we can let's check uh, in. Yeah, let's hit our check-in. Brennan? Uh, uh, I wanted to talk about um, me wandering wandering aimlessly in life right now. Um, I don't know, you boys kind of going through it um, as of today. <laughs> um I don't know, just some shit happening. Your boy's trying to figure his whole situation out um, with the bag getting. Um, and I don't know, i kind of just been thinking about a bunch of shit that, like, that I do in my life that doesn't benefit me. Mm-hmm. So that's why I said, like, I'm probably going to stop nicotine. I've tried before, and it honestly went pretty good. There was, there was that little time. I think I went, like, three months, and then I was just, like, on some, like, fuck it shit. But, um... I don't know, just kind of starting with, like, one thing. You know what I mean? Kind of working my way up and, like, all right, bro, how much shit do you do in your life that does not benefit you? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what are you doing that does not benefit you? And how are you wasting your time? Um, And I think for me, obviously, like, I've picked out, like, nicotine. Um, After talking with your help me, because I already, like, been telling myself, but after talking with your homie on Tarkov, I'm probably gonna give up porn. Um, just cause like I have seen the videos of like people are, like the whole endorphin thing, like in your head, like there is a science behind it, and obviously, like, yeah, I, I think it's super interesting because literally with a coworker of ours the other day, um, they asked me, like, so what do you watch? And I was like, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> And nobody ever believes me, Yeah, which which is fine. Like, I, I don't particularly care if you believe me or not, but it's, it's like, it's such a fucking bad conversation to have yeah. because it's like, then they always go, why? Yeah. They want to like, know why, yeah, like, why like, you, it makes me uncomfortable and I know that I don't need it. Especially if they're like, not a part of that. Like, yeah, what, it, what is it going to benefit you knowing my kings? Well, the, not even just that, but then when I say. I, it just makes me uncomfortable. Then that's, they're like, well, why? Like, you just, you know? And you're like, because I don't want to talk because, about this. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, and I'm already somebody who's not great with that type of conversation. Um, and so, uh, like, that, it sucks. <laughs> because it's just like, dude, just leave me alone. I yeah. just, um, no, but yeah, there's like a huge, like, obviously science behind it. And like, yeah, it also fucks with the gains. The gains? Yeah, as in, like, working out. Um, How so? That uh, semen retention, um, sperm retention, whatever you want to call it, um, it helps you... I forgot how the fucking video went, but basically they're saying that, like, they this dude went on, like, this, like, kind of... Cleansing. Well, yeah, so he showed, like, his gains from, like, from this point to this point, and he was watching porn and beating his dick. Right. And then he went on a semen retention, like cleanse. And for six months, my man went from looking yoked to looking fucking yoked. 
Is it because of like your testosterone? I think so. It has something to do with that. So like the more mm. the more that the more that you hold in, like obviously, like I, I think it's I don't know the science behind it. Please don't look at me like I'm a fucking idiot. I just know that it does shit. Um, I'm sure this is exactly what half our audience wants to hear us <laughs> talk about right now. So, um, yeah, I think for me it's just like doing my research on my shit and genuinely like making the changes that I can for myself that. You know what's crazy? I don't remember this conversation with my homie, so I was so confused when you said this. Yeah, we were playing Tarkov with uh, the homie that you go to Denny's with. Yeah, and, I don't and I, remember that you guys yeah, talked about this. Yeah, and I was like, I was like, oh, I think I'm gonna call it after this. I just want to go smoke, beat my dick, and go to sleep, like fucking around. And then he was like, oh, bro, you shouldn't do that. And I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, it's bad for your head, bro. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but like, fuck it. And he was like, oh yeah, fuck science. <laughs> I think he was talking about smoking. No, I'm pretty sure he was talking about being his dick. Cause no, because I know him. No, and he also said that, like, yeah, it's like, like you shouldn't beat your dick. He's like, it actually fucks with your head. Oh. Mm. Yeah. And then I've seen Yoda. videos on, like, TikTok about it, about, like, people who are, like, work out, and they're, like, um, a lot of the guys are, like, you know, like, you know, first step to, like, big gains is, like, stopping porn and stop beating your dick. He was like, you're literally cutting yourself out of gains. So if I want to get fucking swole, just don't beat my dick. Gains I, equal no bi- dick beating, no boxing match. Celibacy? Basically. I mean, I've already wor- been working on half of that. I know it was funny. I told I told, uh, I told Kratos today at work, right? Because <laughs> he was talking about his celibacy. And uh, what's it called? Um, he was like, yeah, I'm two, I'm two weeks strong. And I was like, you know what? You're doing great, dog. I'm like at like seven months. <laughs> and he was like, by choice <laughs> and i was like i was like honestly a little bit of both i was like because i feel like most of it is by choice like yeah a, a good most of it is by choice and then sometimes when i'm like all right fuck it i'm gonna be a whore sometimes i talk to people and some of the people that i that I, uh, the opportunity has been chosen to i've either had a homie hit me and be like do me a favor don't go near that girl and i'll go Thank you for the heads up. I appreciate it. They're like, yeah, you're gonna walk out with the alphabets after that, and I'm like, he said, they nasty. Yeah, bro, it's a lot. Like, oh. Oh. yeah, the whole hookup culture. Like, as soon as I dip my toe into it, it's like, it's crazy out there. They want to fucking snatch you, bro. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna just keep me my semen retention and my peepee to myself for right now, and just get super swole, and then, um, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, oh, there's a lot to think about it, and it's just like, fuck, but. Um, yeah, man, just kind of wandering aimlessly. And I really think I need to start somewhere, um, to like benefiting me and like genuinely like, obviously right now, what I'm doing right now is not working. Change it. You know what I mean? Something's not working. Change it. Like for the past couple months, I wouldn't say for the past couple months, I say for the past month. And I don't know if it has something to do with our job, but I've been waking up like, yo, I fucking hate my life and not even like in a bad way, but it's just like. I don't want to do this. You know what I mean? Like I'm not trying to do today, you know? And it's just like, all right, rather than moping around and fucking just having self pity or arguing with myself in my head and beat myself up for it. Fucking make the change. Make, yeah. make, make one, di- make one change, make one difference, start somewhere. You know what I mean? And I think that's the biggest thing is like a lot of people don't know where to start, start somewhere. You know what I mean? Look at everything. I think when we get paid on Tuesday, like I'm probably going to go to Office Max or whatever and get like a big ass whiteboard. Like, you know, a big thing that I learned from the homie Kobe is that once you visualize it and you see it on a daily, you're going to keep reminding yourself to keep attacking it. So if I have to tell myself every day, like, all right, but you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this. I'm nine times out of time, I'm not going to do it. If I have it written down on a whiteboard and staring me in the, in the face every time that I walk into my room, I'm going to be like, fuck, I got to get on that. You know what I mean? So just kind of holding myself accountable and like all right bro let's go back at it you know what i mean let's change something up we have to you know what i mean and i think a lot of people don't have that accountability for themselves you know what i mean i think a lot of people try to deflect it and blame it on other things and it's like all right bro just restart you know what i mean like because at this point it's just learning all right bro i learned my lesson obviously this doesn't fucking work on to the next Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it's kind of where i'm at right now fair enough for me, uh, I want to talk about the good times. This is something that I've actually talked about yeah. a lot. Um, 
especially at old job. Um, I used to talk about it a lot. It was kind of like one of my central things that I would talk about at POWs and stuff to kind of motivate people. And it's one of those things that I kind of try to live by, which is the mentality of like the good, you, you always hear like, oh, you don't know the good times till they're gone. No. So my mentality is like, these are the good times. Cherish every second of them. Try it. And, and, and if you don't feel like they're the good times, you try to make them the good times. Because... If it's, you know, someone's in the hospital or, or something bad is happening, then, like, enjoy that time with that person. Try to make that time count. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, like, it, there's no way to change necessarily what's happening. So you might as well enjoy every second of it. You know, I, I had a guy come in today. It was him and his dad sit down. Um, and I'm like, oh, what brings you all in today? And then he's like, the dad turns to him and he... Uh, he goes, oh, we're celebrating his birthday. Uh, and I was like, oh, dude, happy birthday. And he's like, yeah, once you reach a certain point, they're, they're not really exciting. And I was like, oh, man. And, and that kind of was like, I, I looked at him and I was like, hey, man, the birthday's not about a number changing or like you reaching some goal. It was like, it's celebrating you. The fact that you're here is what's big and new. Like For it, another it year. Is, yeah, it's something that's big and exciting. Yeah. That's what we're looking at. And, like, the dad just kind of stared at me, and he was like, I think he needed to hear that. I was like, I think you needed to hear that too, man. <laughs> but it just, like, taking that time to understand that, you know, as shitty as it is, and, and as much as, like, at times things suck or or feel heavy or, or like, really weigh you down, that, that is, the good times are all around you, and it's all about perception and, and the way that you make them. And, and your willingness to create that environment, you know? But, yeah, so... I feel you. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is, like, everything is what you make of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I try to tell everyone this, but if everyone kind of has the uh, the mindset... Not for everything, because obviously you don't want to be a fucking douchebag, but... uh. <laughs> You know, if you carry around the mindset of, like, yo, this is my world, everyone else is living in it, then, I don't know, you kind of start to conquer shit. You know what I mean? It's just kind of keeping the mindset of, like, I don't know, we, we've we talked about it before, but you have to you have to be your number one cheerleader. You know what I mean? You have to be, you know, your number one fan. So, and I think that's something that, like, my next birthday, like, I'm about to just do something for me. Like, I'm about to just be by myself but something for me you know what i mean when i turned 19 i started doing that i started realizing like birthday like i i don't do a whole lot for myself so like make either like if it's some getting something that's expensive that i want or you know you know it like doing going out of my way to take a day and just enjoy it um you know what i've realized i want to do Hmm. and i i have to I have to crunch the numbers here, but um, at some point, I think I want to move to Japan. Like, yeah. soon. Like, move, move? Like, maybe for like six months to a year. You know what I mean? And just kind of actually disappear. Why Japan? I learn how to drift. Be all my Tokyo drift shit. You know? <laughs> let's let's no, well because i had an uncle who was stationed out in japan and like that whole car scene out there is ridiculous out there like that shit is real life out there and they take that shit serious I'm trying to go be like young padawan turned into a jedi type shit and that you know what i mean because i'm gonna come back here and just start ripping shit up oh it'd be beautiful it'd be so lit oh Let's uh <laughs> let's dive into <laughs> fucking hell. Let's dive into this episode. Uh our main topic for today is how tech impacts society. What a fucking topic. Um we're gonna touch on a couple things like um cell phones, computers, social media, um, which is something we talked about last week. Um and then like upbringings, the social dynamics that have like kind of changed um work standard living standards school um parasocial um and then like different struggles that have been caused because of it and so on and so forth 
Um, those are kind of some of the stuff that we're going to talk about. This is a topic that I actually picked. Um, Facts. Uh, because it's something that I actually love talking about. Because this shit's crazy. Not even just that, but like it's something that it, it's so ingrained in the career that I went to college for. Um, and, and it's such a big part of my life in general that like I think about it all the time, especially because it's something that's such a big part of my life, but I'm not big on social media yeah. type of stuff. So like, it's such a weird dichotomy for me. Um, and it's a big word. It is. <laughs> I like that word. Um, it's a big boy word, but it, it's one of those things where it's just, it's so weird. And if you were to ask any of my significant others, they would all be like, yeah, he doesn't shut the fuck up about it. Hell Yeah. As it should be, though. You know what I mean? It's like, you know what you like. You know what you're passionate about. And, I don't know, you kind of just don't waver from it. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's just like, yeah, bro, this is my shit right here. You know? So, uh, let's let's hit it. Um, let's, let's start with the basics, Brendan. How do you think... How do you, how do you feel like um, tech has impacted your life? What, what do you feel like... Well... Uh. Well, uh, well, <laughs> um, I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. I watched technology turn people into like bots. I ain't gonna lie, you know what I mean? Because like for me, I've always been the type of person where I can like, I can be the loudest motherfucker in the room, not care about what anybody thinks, and just be like, I can talk to everybody. You know what I mean? Like I can be cool with everybody. You know what I mean? I feel like that's something that like. Not everyone can do, but you have this, like, few people. Like, I was a class clown, quote-unquote, like, in, in class. Like, I didn't really care about school. I was always just trying to fuck around with people and talk to people, make them laugh, yada, yada. And um, I don't know. You kind of see, I think, the big thing, especially when getting hired at old job, um, it was like, oh, like, it's so good to see people who look, who can, like, it was something we heard all the time at work. It was like, it's so good to see people who know how to talk to other people. Like, you see so many people our age that are in their phone and... Dude, you'd see so many people coming through the line. On their phone. Not even just on their phone, but, like, the time of day that they would give you is... Yeah, yeah, like none or little. Like you are the least important thing currently because it's like, they're and they're doom scrolling Instagram in a fucking line, and the one person that's there to talk to them and do and do their job. Yeah, and they're just like, mm-hmm, yeah, large. And I'm like, dude, this is the only interaction you have in this line, basically, and you're gonna fucking sit here on your phone and doom scroll. Yeah, so just like seeing shit like that, and then you know having. People who like, like, I don't know, you always, you always see those guys where like, those guys who know how to spit game on the phone, but when they come up to a girl, they're like, you know, and they can't, they can't fucking talk at all. That's, that's how I feel. But like with people in general, like people can talk so like freely and whatever they want behind your screen. When it comes to talking to somebody in person, constructing words and like constructing sentences and like putting shit together that makes sense, sometimes aren't people's strong suits it's okay you know what i mean mm -hmm. but work on it <laughs> work on talking to people yeah you know Social what i mean skills are everything like, and, and and like and that's not even an exaggeration like your social skills are literally everything because one way or another you are basically required to have them at some point in your life on a daily basis yeah what are you gonna do just sit under a rock and get paid for it you know what i mean yeah like, I know there's people who, like, obviously do their own shit and, like, you know, get paid for their own freelance work, yada, yada, this and that. But you still have to network. No matter what you do, you got to find people to pay you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, the best painter couldn't do anything if they didn't fucking know how to sell it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I just make this shit, but what am I going to do with it? You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. you have to know how to network. You have to know how to talk to people. Um, and I think technology, cell phones, social media, the whole nine yards has affected that so much. Cause like, I don't know, it's just a huge spectrum from either talking to people or even like when it comes to like beefing, bro, you see people beefing all over fucking social media and they'll say whatever the fuck they want over social media. And then when it comes to like, all right, bro, talking that shit to my face, motherfuckers are like, ah, it's not worth it, bro. Ah, yeah. nah, bro. I'm cool, bro. I'm like, eh, you're a bitch, you know? <laughs> 
Let's um, you kind of already touched on it, but I. What, when you grew up, what was kind of like the standard? When when did, what was tech for you when you were growing up? Xbox three sixty. Timeline ish, like oh. roughly, how old were you? Ooh, I was young. I had a phone when I was like eleven. So you were in what? Like probably fifth, fifth, fifth grade, fifth, fourth. I'd say like fourth or fifth grade, like because by middle school I was on Snapchat, Kick. You had Snapchat in middle school. Yeah, bro. My Snapchat right now is over a million because it's been the same Snapchat that I've had since middle school, dog. That's crazy. My shit is... Uh, I, it, it's funny we talk about this because if there's a thing... I don't know if you've ever seen it, but there's a thing about like, oh, if his or her Snap score is over a million, she, they're a fucking whore. Like, don't talk to them. Or they just had Snap. <laughs> exactly. And so a lot of people look at... I've had people look at my shit like, damn, bro, you talk to a lot of people. I'm like, bro, I've had this shit since I was like 13, 14. You know what I mean? Yeah, that standard's going to... Away. Yeah, bro. So for me, it's like, yeah, like we had Snapchat fucking, I remember Snapchat, Kick, and Instagram were like it. You remember Kick, bro? I do remember Kick. That shit was- I never used Kick. Really, bro? Bro. It's been ingrained with me since I was- Dog, bro. Kick used to be the shit. Like, you know when someone was having a rough ass day when their profile, they just put their profile picture as a black screen. You'd be like, damn, bro. Like, this motherfucker just dipping out or what? You know what I mean? Like, he had homies put a black screen. You'd have to send them like, yo, you good? <laughs> What okay? Oh, shit. So I feel like this is such a bad way for like to describe the time era. But like, what iPhone was out or like? Oh, the ori- I remember my dad had the original iPhone. Like the oh, it looked like a fucking brick. yeah, those things <laughs> like a old. brick. Yeah, but like that's when same time era. Or was that like? Yeah, like I remember I had a. Uh, I don't know if it was a Samsung or a Google phone, but it was like that and then iPhone. For me, I don't remember spy- smartphones getting introduced until I was in seventh or eighth grade. That's crazy, bro. No, see, for me, it was we had iPods because my de- my brother was like the the person to like um, do like uh, music leaks so that we didn't have to pay for them. Mm-hmm. So he would go on the computer and then we dump- had like iPods. Yeah, yeah. Well, like iPods, iPhones. Um, we like streaming music and shit like that. I remember the little sidekicks. You press the button, it would flip up. Yeah, sidekicks. Um, um, blackberries. I remember I used to play the little game on the Blackberry. I literally mm-hmm. kept the phone just so I can play that game every once in a while. Yeah, that, I mean, like, <laughs> this. I don't want to like nostalgia talk tech <laughs> because like that's obviously not what we're here to do right <laughs> now. But um. That's kind of like the timeline for me. I was very much more like computer and consoles centric on like what my growing up was. And then I got a phone in middle school, like, like I said, like seven. I probably had, I think I had like a, a like a, a flip phone um, in like sixth grade. Yeah. Um, but then somewhere in between like seventh and eighth grade, I got a iPhone um yeah i think it impacted me a lot because like it went from bro dealing with social media and like that whole aspect in school it's stressful shit it is crazy dog like it's actually nuts bro because like at that time like you felt like one post could ruin your life like if someone was beefing with you you will still feel that way or bro like there used to be uh uh like hate pages people would create hate pages yeah i remember this um, bro like it was like a trend to create a hate page and then just shit on people that you went to school with like you would you would see that they would take a picture of them like in the middle of the school the day you'd be like yo who the fuck da- low-key even- thinking about it now that's kind of psychotic yeah uh, yeah, it is. No, like actually, um, like you, you know, walking the, the around the school and taking early, pictures of people. Yeah. Early Instagram and and uh, a couple other websites and stuff, they would have it to where it would be like, um, submissions, and so it would literally be like, my school here hate account, uh, and it would just be like, and, and it would be like, this account is for putting people that you don't like on blast from this school. Yeah. Um, and it would just take submissions. So whoever ran the account. Yeah, put post them up. whatever they got yeah, sent. Yeah, bro, absolutely. Um, this shit was crazy. And because it's all anonymous. Yeah. Did you ever have a have a Ask FM? 
Yeah, I know what Ask FM is. I didn't, I didn't have one, but I know about it. I remember, bro, people used to talk the most shit on there, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, you would have one person, like, like asking about whatever, like, beef if, like, Susie and fucking... Hold on. Ask (laughs) FM is basically a thing where you have an account and everybody can see that it's you, um, but they send questions to you. And you can reply to them. And you have no idea who it is. Yeah, the the questions are anonymous. It's the same thing as um posting a poll on an Instagram story. Yeah. Except you don't see who's sending the answer. Yeah. And, bro, people... So Susie and Chad just broke up because Chad was talking to another Susie in class, right? It'd be like, boom, 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 boom. What happened? Are you okay? What a whore. You gotta get... Like, it was just... They would cut you into... smash. <laughs> like, it, it would... No, like... Uh, Oh, bro. Like, I think that it's crazy because people have this like rose tinted glasses also of like early internet was so nice. Like early internet was easy. It's like, no. dude, like it's never changed. Like nothing changed. It's gotten worse is the yeah. difference. And and arguably, actually, I think it's gotten better because it's gotten regulated, but it's still That's bad. True. Yeah. Um, But the internet's gotten more regulated. It's just now more general hate than it is targeted hate. Yeah, because I remember, like, we used to have, like, like, we would have talks in class after because parents would come in and be like, bro, my kid's about to fucking, like... And, and to be fair, this might still happen. Yeah. I, and I imagine that it does. I imagine there are still moments, but I imagine now there are more private dispute. Yeah, like, it, it, like you, for, for a kid now to post on social media, nine times out of ten, it's going to be reviewed and fucking seen like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Back then, parents weren't really on Instagram like that. Parents weren't, didn't know what the fuck Ask FM was, you know, didn't. Parents still don't know what Ask FM is. I I hate Um, to break it to you. um, Same thing with Snapchat. You know what I mean? Like back, you know, like you could shit on people back then in Snapchat and it was like, bro, you remember when you used to be able to see people's best friends? Oh, did you ever have a Snapchat like that long ago where you could see people's best friends? So my my story with Snapchat is this is literally just going to be a fucking tech talk podcast. anyway um my sister got on snapchat and she was in high school and she was like hey you should get on this uh and that's how i, I literally learned about all all of social media pretty mm-hmm. much except for instagram instagram my significant other at the time was like you should get on it um and i was like okay <laughs> <laughs> just like that yeah pretty much <laughs> okay sure um and so my sister shows me and I was like, why wouldn't I just send a photo to my friend if I want that? Like I, it, the concept didn't make sense to me. I was like, why wouldn't I just fucking send a photo? And she's like, because you can put messages in the photo. I was like, I can just fucking text them. I hate you. But like, it, I get it, and, but I get you. And obviously like the concept of Snapchat works a lot better than the pitch does. Yeah. Because when you pitch something like that to early internet, especially, or like early phones, you're like, what the fuck is that like, like what's the point if i'm trying to send a photo i'll just fucking send a photo yeah but the whole concept is that like you're sending you know like videos of stuff and it's like easier formatting and, yeah and a bunch of shit like it's that quick. You, don't, you don't have to deal with like android to iphone conversions because back then that was a problem or if you didn't really have service yeah you know what i mean it takes a while to fucking yeah buffer there's, there's like a that. lot of stuff or like it's a wireless a uh, wire internet based conversation and, and stuff like that to where you don't hit data caps no. uh, and, and there's a lot of stuff that comes with snapchat but i do think early snapchat was invented for sending nudes and porn um for sure and you know how i know because the databases were fucking bad um and it wasn't until snapchat blew up and became a very big company that they got people like actually like hey we have to regulate this. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, 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 for sure. Yeah, Snapchat was a very dirty app at one, like in the it beginning. It still is. I mean, yeah, but like, yeah, it's kind of like, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Hey, bro. Hey, he, he, he's probably sad. Do him a favor. Send him a booty pic. Hey, but honestly, don't even send it on Snapchat. Send it in the iMessage where he's where it's like fuzzed out and he has to like wipe it out. And then he's gonna be like, "Oh shit!" So you can do that. Yeah, you can send. Dude, pi- I'm so fucking old, bro. You can send pictures to where it's like, uh, uh, like super pixelated, and you can't see shit, and you can see like an outline of something, and then once you clear it out, it's and like the actual picture. I feel like I'm 90 when I talk to you. What a fucking boomer. That's <laughs> or or <laughs> hold on, I'm about to blow your mind real quick, yo. I saw some shit on Twitter. <laughs> This girl, right? So there's a, there's this filter where on iMessage where you can 
put a picture as a puzzle. So it mixes around all the other like pixels in the picture, right? <laughs> So this girl, she put like whipped cream on her titties and then sent her man's a picture, and she put the the picture of like a uh, of like the puzzle being scrambled around, and then she was like, "What do you guys think it is?" <laughs> so you see like just a bunch of different skin, and then you see like just white marks all around, <laughs> and he put it together, and she sent like the the message after, and he was like, "That was a lot of work." But it was worth it. <laughs> it's like, bro, you gotta have fun with it. You know what I mean? They just make fun ways to send nudes now. <sighs> Fucking sentence. Um, what a time to be alive. Send booty pics. Don't send unsolicited dick pics, though. Don't send nudes unsolicited. Period. Like, the. But I feel like that's like a huge one. You know what I mean? Where not yes, but just in general, don't send unsolicited anything. Shit, period. Yeah, yeah, like, be cool. Be. Be, be cool, man. Be cool. Be a good fucking person. Yeah. Um, we kind of touched on it already, but like, what, <laughs> it, what is being on social media kind of mean? And like, what it, what is that in today's society? What is, uh, it, it's especially just especially compared to like where social media has had a weird evolution because originally it was like it was MySpace and like um in that crazy. And then, you know, like Facebook and, and there's other stuff in between that is kind of like sprinkled throughout of, of things like Twitter was not at all what it was now or what it was back then, what it is now. Um, and, you know, it's definitely everything's kind of changed. You know, Instagram is not just now a place to post like it's not new hip Facebook. It's like people get paid for being Instagram models. Yeah, not only that, bro, but I think you once you hit like a thousand views, I think on a reel, you can start monetizing it. But what what does that kind of mean now um, in today's society, especially because compared to where we were? Um, like you said, we kind of hit on it, but social media is for me, it's just status. A lot of people like to use social media as a status. You know what I mean? Um, and social media is whatever that person that you're looking at or reading their tweet, yada, yada, whatever. It's whatever they want you to believe, think, or whatever that is going on in their head, in their mind. You know what I mean? Um, and I think I learned that with T is like, don't believe everything you see on yeah. social media, which I already knew before. But when it comes to like really understanding like the background to it and like how social media like really, really affects people, like, as cool as it would be to be an influencer, your whole income is based off of people liking you. Yeah, no, trust me. Uh, even creating this podcast and, like, the fact that we both stream and want that to go somewhere, I think about that shit all the time. Yeah, like, our our income and our, you know... Is based off of what we can provide as... For other people, yeah, as, as entertainment. As big brainers. Yeah, you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, I can't even fathom the idea of like and that's why t said you have to have multiple streams of income because there's a lot of people on ig you'll see them blow up they'll be relevant for a couple months and then all of a sudden oh no somebody somebody ran out of content guess what happens you're a nobody again you know what i mean i think it's super interesting also because the talk almost feels like it's i don't know what it would equate to back in the day but you know it'd be like oh like how much of X did you sell or like what's your net worth and stuff like that. But now it feels like it's a lot more like how many followers you got. That, 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 well, yeah, anything in social media related is like anything that you have to do that requires you to be on social media and, you know, you're trying to go somewhere with it. People are going to look at you and be like, oh, cool. Like how many people you, like fuck with yeah, you? Dude, like honestly, that's one of the most stressful things is whenever you're like, oh, yeah, I stream or yeah, we have a podcast. And like, oh, how many people follow you? And I'm like, oh. I'm like, bro, I have, like, two people who watch me consistently. I'm like, if I tell you that doesn't make you want to check it out, you should just check it out because that's also a thing. If you have friends, I think this is, like, a uh, like a viral sound. Ah. Like, a viral sound that's going, or a sound that's going viral right now is uh, if you have friends that are starting up a business, if you have friends who are starting up something on social media, if you have friends starting anything, one, don't ask for a discount. Pay the full price. Be a good person. 
They're, they're yeah, if it's a biz like if it's a business thing like you should not want a discount because you want to see your friend grow yeah and then when it takes off do whatever the fuck yeah but well, like well, like when when my motherfucker's rich I'll be like yo like you remember when I paid full price for this shit you trying yeah. to yeah you know what I mean but like he ain't gonna worry about that but like little fucking Johnny Two Cakes who's opened up his pie factory yeah like pay for pay full price bitch that's one um number two support your people um. Don't Dude, be, just like back them, like wait, you, be yeah, with bro. them on those steps. Like if it's something that you can watch, like watch it. Or My like, goal in these next two weeks is to see how many people at our job currently have Amazon Prime and don't have the a Twitch account. Because guess who's getting Twitch uh Prime subs? This fucking guy right here. I I was talking to a. I don't know what your name. Is. Yeah, I'm sure she wouldn't care. I was talking to Sarah today. And she was like, um, I was telling her about like streaming and stuff like that. And I was like, hey, bro. Oh, no. She's talking about Amazon packages because she's the type of person that gets like Amazon packages on a daily, which is like random shit. Yeah. And so. Mm, bad yeah, vibe. Yeah. So she'll be, she said that she'll be like scrolling through like TikTok or like Instagram and there'll be like something really cool. And they'll be like, yeah, the link is in Amazon here. And she click the link and then autom- automatically she buys it. And it's dude. like, she doesn't have to pay for shipping. Like, so it's like there the next day. Like, <laughs> oh, dude, that's so wasteful. Right, so we were, and so she was like, you know, you don't have to be so loud. You don't have to call me out for it. And uh, so I was telling her, I was like, oh, so you have you have Amazon Prime. <laughs> and then Brandon was standing there, and he goes, oh no, I already know where this is going. Yeah, and like, <laughs> but, I'm like, but honestly, I do that too. Yeah, so I'm like, oh, you have an Amazon Prime. I was like, you have a Twitch account. She goes, I don't even know what Twitch is. I said, <laughs> let perfect. me introduce you. I said, well, let me put you on, Sarah. I said, guess what? I said, it won't even cost you a fucking dime. I said, you'll start an account, link your Prime, give me the Prime sub, I get money, and you just be a good person. She goes, that sounds like a good deal to me. And I go, yeah, you don't even got to give me the five bucks that it usually is. She goes, I'm down. And I was like, beautiful. Well, like, it's also been really interesting to hear the... Also, if you have Amazon Prime and you don't have a Twitch account, please come drop Prime subs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's also so interesting to hear like the amount of people that listen to the podcast spooky and people who don't uh who you'd be like damn i figure you'd listen to it shit it's an hour of your day put it on two times speed it's 30 minutes fuck she listens to it twice she puts it on two times speed and then she'll listen to it again later what a thug yeah shout out to shay not always but for the most part regardless love you dog like it and that's my thing is like, anyway, it doesn't take much to support your homies. If they're doing something, support them, show them love. Yeah, I was it like, means I was everything like, and it helps them get somewhere. Because that's a lot of a lot of shit, especially talking about technology. Like, there's so many ways to get paid on the internet now. You know what I mean? We've seen OnlyFans. We've seen, you know, Instagram reels, people being influencers, TikTok influencers. You know, they end up getting brand deals or um, fucking, fucking... Fucking, what's that dude's name? Drewski. Drewski literally got big off of just posting funny shit on Instagram. Fast forward a couple months, maybe a year. He's literally Drake's homie. <laughs> I have nothing to say to that. I, I, insane. Do you feel like nowadays we're kind of like required to lean on tech? Yeah, bro, if you're not tapped in with tech, bro, you're low-key. The world's going to keep evolving without you. You can keep it to a certain extent if you're not trying to... If you're not... If you don't have anything to do with social media or, like, any internet and you can stay off of it and stay in, in like, tapped in with networking and, like, really, like, understanding, like, just people, by all means, do it. But when you... If you're any type of business person, if you're starting up anything, word of mouth is going to be a lot harder... I don't even just mean in like an industry stance. I just mean like day to day life. Like, do you think? No, you don't have to be. I don't. I don't think you have to be. Um, you don't think people lean on tech? I think in today's world, yeah, a lot of people do lean on. Well, tech. That's what I mean. Oh, I thought you meant just like, just kind of like the opinion on it. But no, uh, yeah, I think a lot of people do lean on today, uh, or lean on technology today, only because I feel like they lean on technology to like, almost kind of like. I don't know, not even, uh, kind of feel, I don't, I don't know if this is the correct way to put it, but kind of like get them through their day. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Like that's pe- what people do with TikTok. Yeah, people and they're like, oh, I just need to go on TikTok for a bit and I'll be fine. I'm like, the fuck you will. I'm like, yeah, I don't think I've ever heard that. But if so, I have. if someone ever looked, I've heard someone from work say that. If someone ever looked at me and goes, I'm gonna just go on TikTok and it's gonna make everything feel better. I'm literally gonna not probably talk to them anymore, only because Look, like, it's also that's you, crazy. I, it blows my mind whenever. <laughs> And I think of one person in particular whenever I say this, but whenever I'm like, oh, what do you do for fun? And they're like, I just kind of go on TikTok and work. And I'm like, you don't have like hobbies? You don't do shit? I'm going to stop fucking with this. My bad. <laughs> uh, but I'm like, you don't have hobbies? And they're like, I hang out with my friends. Like, but mostly I just go on TikTok and kind of scroll. And I'm like, yeah, that's crazy. What is your life? Yeah, bro. You're, like, you're I, wasting I, so much time just. Sitting alone, laughing at nothing things that make you feel funny for like literally a 30 minute. seconds to a minute, yeah, and then you'll forget about it until you show somebody again, or yeah, or you send it and then forgot that you send that, and then they yeah. bring it up later, and you're like, Oh, I forgot I said that to Do you. You know, you know, okay, so there's this like theory that is people oh, lean on Jackson with a conspiracy theory. So there's this theory that people will lean on tech, right? Uh-huh. And they their brain tries to subconsciously pull them out of leaning on tech, leaning on things like that, the aids, by asking people. So, for example, a situation is you call me and you say, hey, my Streamlabs isn't working. And mm-hmm. you, like, give me, like, hey, I just can't get my webcam to come up. And that's your issue. Mm-hmm. Something you could Google. Mm-hmm. And... So the theory is like, you ask me a question that I am not qualified to know the answer to. In this case scenario, we'll say I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> so you you ask me this question because though you know Google is available to you and it will probably reply 10 times faster than I will, you are trying not to lean on technology. Like your brain subconsciously tells you not to. And I think for me personally, only because like, and it not goes, ev- not everyone has a Jackson, so I can't really. <laughs> not even not even just that though, but like it, it goes to the brain being uh the brain being like <laughs> sorry uh I don't want to lean on this thing that is irreliable or whatever, and it's like and I crave that human connection, so I'm going to reach to my nearest outlet. Yeah, I feel you. But people turn it on its head, so sometimes people will be like, "Hey, what's the answer to this?" And then I'll just send them the link to Google, because like the fuck do i look like i don't know you are google listen for anyone who doesn't understand bro jackson is my god when it comes to my pc and anything that has to do with anything related to pc streaming anything tech in general he is god dm 110 percent i'm like i i literally feel like a little lost puppy every time i'm like jackson can you fix this (laughs) and he's like yeah, bro, just do this, this, and this. And I follow what he tells me to do. Do I know what it means? Absolutely the fuck not. Do I know what it does? Absolutely the fuck not. But shit works. It's beautiful. Most of the time. Most of the time. Fuck Tarkov. But yeah. Dude, anyway. Um, <laughs> but like that theory of just like we were lean on tech so much that we like almost have to force ourselves into human interaction at times. I wish more people force themselves into human interaction. Yeah, uh, let's talk about that. Let's talk about how it's impacted our social dynamics. Some people just don't know how to talk to people, especially with COVID, bro. COVID made this shit so much worse, bro. I ain't even gonna lie to you, dog. COVID basically forced people into their homes and honestly made a lot of people money because that's when... I think a lot of people started taking the whole, whether it be streaming, Instagram, influencer, it's TikTok It's when people influencer. really began to see, oh, we can profit off of the internet, off of creating Off the stuff. goofy shit we do. Not even just that, but, like, you also see COVID is literally whenever, like, you, you hear YouTubers talk about it, like, when COVID hit, that was the best time of my life. Everyone's that, at home. Not every, even, every, yeah, everyone wants content. Yeah. And they're like, my my revenue was, like, five times. Yeah, because everyone literally was at home looking for something to pass time. Yeah, I found probably, like, almost 20 new YouTubers that I, like, watch in and out. Because yeah, just of going COVID. back and forth. Yeah, you know just like, I mean? oh, it's been, like, you know, four weeks. Let me check on what this guy's up to. Yeah, you know, and it's like COVID forced everyone into their house. And I think if it wasn't for our job, 
a lot of people ended up getting social anxiety. A lot of people were well, like, I didn't have when I when COVID hit, I didn't have that job. I didn't have that job until almost a year into COVID. Oh wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I, it was about eight months because I applied after about two months of COVID, and then I didn't hear from another six months. Jesus. Um. Yeah, bro. At least for me, like old job definitely kept it going, but a lot of people got social anxiety. A lot of people was just like, I don't want to be outside, bro. A lot of people was like, I just don't want to do anything. Like, I just want to stay at home because people got used to it. You know what I mean? And especially like, and it changed the whole dynamic of, especially with technology, working from home now because of COVID. It's ideal. Yeah. And people realized I can do exactly what I was doing, but not having to go into the office every day, but in my own comfort of my own home. You know what I mean? You know what the scary part of that is? It breaks down the whole infrastructure. And, and people don't talk about this. In what way? Managers are not as important in that type of situation. Oh, yeah. Because you can either have an AI just trek and then it pings like, hey, this person was not on their work assigned thing for, you know, two hours. Mm-hmm. Big boss, go check it out. Yeah. HR, go check it out. Yeah. And then, you know managing becomes less and less of a pivotal thing. Anyway, that gets into a whole dichotomy, <laughs> a whole thing of like... Another big boy word, dichotomy. Spell a bitch. Same one I used earlier. Um, Spell a bitch. Dichotomy. Mm. I'm dyslexic. I don't know what you want. LOL. Um, but it gets into a whole thing of like, uh, you know, how pivotal are these positions that we're assigning now? Because I don't have to have you here on the days that I'm not here walking around the floor. Being like, hey, Susan, I need that <laughs> fax. Um, but yeah, man, I think uh, from a social standpoint, technology has made it's it easier. regressed us. Yeah, whether it be, oh, we had the whole Zoom thing. People were virtually talking to each other. They have meetings in virtual, the whole virtual shit. NFTs were blowing up. Like, there was a lot of shit that happened. Like, now that, like, people are still in the NFT world, but there's shit that, like, I kind of want us to do a, con- a, a a podcast episode that's about COVID. That that's like what changed in COVID or what happened in COVID. I think that'd be cool. Yeah. Anyway, um, no, like the whole NFT space. Like, there's people who go and uh, who I remember when it was first starting, and there was this company that uh, created a uh, almost like a sim world, um, with their NFTs and uh. They hired virtual real estate agents. So basically, you're selling property in the virtual world, but you're making real money off of it. So people are now buying, you know, little pixels of That's land. So That's so much. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and they're worth, however said, in crypto. And then that person can transfer the crypto over and make their money. I think that. It's interesting to think about how social media and, and like just tech in general has impacted our societal like ability to conversate and, and talk because, you know, if you take it back years back to whenever like RuneScape and World of Warcraft were like the biggest things. My brother was so into RuneScape. You'd have people who lose their lives like that, that would spend forever like just sitting in their like, you know, and it feels like that's what it is. It's just in microdoses now. Yeah. You know, it is now instead of this, it, the comic, the, you know, the, the, the cartoon version of this character that sits in front of their screen for, you know, eight hours plus a day and does nothing but eat Doritos and Mountain Dew, you know, gamer fuel. Gamer fuel. It, like that, that, that cartoon character is now just everybody. It's just in a different way. And not, and not only that, but that and you can see it. You can look at your phone's analytics. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing now, especially with like Unreal Engine 5, is that they're making a lot of nostalgic games that we had growing up with better graphics. So now you're going to have better systems. And better systems. So now you're going to have these people botting just mindlessly like into the PC, into their monitor because they're like, yo, this reminds me of when I was a kid and I can just fucking do this all day. And it looks how I thought it did. Yeah. Oh, shit. You know what I mean? Um, and I think the biggest thing with that is not only is it going to be kind of spooky, but those same old 
characters are now in 3D. They're now in, you know, if you have... Or a, whatever, you know. Yeah, if you have a VR, you know, you can literally see and be in the game. I, th- I think that it's just our social situation is so weird because y- you can literally see it, like... It, and maybe it's just everybody's always fucking sucked at talking, but like you can see it when you go out and you have conversations with people. It's difficult for a lot of people that conversate. Like the amount of people that are like on the level of like, I would rather sit here and not enjoy my food than say, hey, I don't like this is insane. Yeah, bro. A lot of people don't know how to speak up. A lot of people don't know how to just. I feel like be somebody with a voice you know what i mean like a lot of people don't know how to speak up for their shit whether it be even something as little as like y'all don't like my food or even standing up for something you know what i mean like a lot of people are just like scared i want to talk about the difference in challenges in generations so this kind of cuts into something that i personally fucking hate hearing more than anything else like any time that I talk about this, um, or or like a conversation about technology and generational differences comes up, I always hear this one sentence that pisses me off, which is, "Well, you know the iPad babies, fuck off." Okay, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna say this one time and one time only. This is looky funny though. Shut the <laughs> fuck up, because nine times out of ten, the motherfucker saying it. Is the reason it's happening or is one? So also keep true. it out your fucking mouth. Also very true. Because, and that's what like people don't get is, and I've had somebody in my personal life do this, where they, they make a comment about it, and I looked at them and I said, you literally were bitching when they weren't on the iPad because you didn't want them to talk to you. Pick a lane. <laughs> Facts. A lot of people do give their kids fucking iPads or something to watch because they're like, I just don't want to deal with you right now here. The other one that I hate is, it's my babysitter. Fuck you. <laughs> I, uh, uh. Yeah. Anyway, let's talk about generational differences. And I just kind of want to get that out of the way because it will come up. What do you think that it, a lot of people from generations when technology was not as big will say that we have it easy now because, you know, we have cell phones, we have ways to keep in contact, we have social media, we have all these things, and or we have, like, ways to do research at the, yeah, the, the, not the easier. fingertips. You yeah, know? that's not easier. Uh, the instant gratification type of thing, um, which is a whole problem in itself of, like, we care too much about instant gratification to where we're not patient for things that take too long. Facts. Which is also why more and more bad relationships form than healthy relationships. Anyway. A therapist Jackson. That's why. Because you, you go for what's easy. Instead of trying to make the hard thing work. Long story short, don't be easy. Be cheesy. Jay Breezy. I don't want to keep doing that. <laughs> um, so what what do you feel like that difference kind of looks like? And 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 you say you said instantly like it's not easier. And and what kind of makes you say that? I don't know, because it'd be like, obviously back in the day. Back in Nam. Back in Nam. You know what I mean? If something happened, right, let's take school, for an instance. You know what I mean? If something happened in school back in the day, you got to wait till lunchtime or recess to hear about it. You know what I mean? And then all that beef and shit going to get settled at, at, at the park. You know what I mean? Hey, Donnie, I heard you shit your pants. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yo, like I heard blah, 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 this and that. And then, like, it might have happened, like, a couple hours ago. But you still going to hear about it. Now, if something happens at all, everybody in that class, the classroom next to you, and everybody in goddamn school knows about it within 30 seconds. You know why? Yeah, because if someone... 60 someone's... Snapchats just got sent out. Exactly. I still remember, bro, if this comes across, honestly, rest in peace to the homie Kelby... That was one of the realest motherfuckers I've ever met in my life, right? Long story short, I'll never forget my freshman year about coming into Paradise, which is the high school I graduated, or not graduated from, but yeah, that's a long story. Um, I went to Paradise, and I remember my quarterback at the time, um, he was still getting fucked with about it because uh, one of the other dudes that I'd known, I, I went to school with his little brother, um, 
we were really close friends, like growing up, yada yada, this and that. And he was my quarterback or my best friends at the time, uh, other best friend. Like he was neighbors with him, knew his older brother, which is Kelby. He also played at Paradise, and um, but Kelby wasn't the type of kid. Like he was a big white kid, um, didn't take no shit from nobody. And as soon as he saw a lot of the thing about my high school is that there was a very lot of uh, lol. There was a lot of entitled ass motherfuckers people with. They kind of looked all the like. We'll say that. You know what I mean? A lot of entitled people. Um, And this motherfucker, like, those were his favorite people to fuck with, bro. It's like, oh, you think you're entitled to the world? Let me shit on your day real quick, you know? And it was just like, you saw him, like, humble people, you know? Never forget the day, bro. This motherfucker, whole video went viral. Went on World Star and everything, bro. Because... Oh. Because, yeah, bro, because this motherfucker, they were, like, pushing each other, yada, yada. And the quarterback, like, had pushed Kelby, right? And then Kelby was like, I'm going to give you one more chance, bro. Do not push me. Fucking he pushes him. You see him. He puts down his backpack in the water jug. Everyone knows who Kelby is, dog. This motherfucker is not to be fucked with, bro. When I tell you, he, he went to go push him again, bro. Kelby, like, mushed it and said, mm, 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 right? Literally picked him up. Dropped him on the floor, bro. And when I tell you, Jackson, that this man's head was clapping on the cement from these punches, bro. Like, ding, ding. And, like, literally was like, ding, ding, ding. One of the coldest videos I've ever seen in my life. Everyone, it happened a year ago. Before I got there. I was in eighth grade. Came in freshman year. They're still shitting on him about it. You know what I mean? Like, if there's video proof of it, if people got it on there, like, you're never going to outlive that. Like, there's, like, even famous athletes that, like, get posted up about shit that they posted in high school or, you know, if they were seen with a certain girl or, um, like, there's always that meme of, like, Lil Durk, he's a rapper, um, being with uh, this not-so-win-all bueno girl who people are like, yo, there's no shot you were with this female. Um, and it's like... Once it's either a picture or on the internet, it's forever. Yeah. It's going to be there forever. You know what I mean? Um, like, I remember in high school, we tried to go find each other's, like, old middle school accounts. Oh, we, Jesus. Have you ever done that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and so, like, you'll see, like, just, like, infant you or, like, you know. Or well, my Instagram <laughs> is that. That's my hilarious. Is the same one. That's crazy. Actually, I think that I had one, a different one, but I didn't last long, and so I swapped. And so I think that Yeah I'm pretty sure I had a different one I just deleted it And I don't know if I deleted it You could probably still find my shit <laughs> That shit was hilarious um, Mine's definitely from high school onward though Yeah mine was like middle school onward Yeah um, But yeah man it's like in Back then it was It took a while for you to hear about something Or it, you had to wait for it to go on the news You had to wait for you know if any big dramatic shit was happening And I think that's also Something that's progressed and is also better now than i would say it's back then because now something bad happens everybody can know and and you can find out for yourself what the real facts are as much as much as the real facts are given out you know what i mean back then it was literally on the news and it was whatever propaganda that the news anchor or those people at the news station wanted you to see you know what i mean it's whatever america wanted their people to see now it's like, oh, I see something. That's why. But something, it, there's there's also something under it. That's why Islamic people have such bad stigmas about them is because of everything that happened with 9-11. And that's who got pinned. And, and like, that's what they blew it up as. Yeah, I think I remember seeing a video of uh, somebody talking about being like. A, and like, because white people just fucking suck. Not wrong. I agree. 110%. Um, very valid. Um, but uh, yeah, there was a video of like them basically talking about. Uh, this uh, Islamic dude was like uh, basically talking about his experience of um, living in New York at that time after everything that happened. Those people got fucking yeah. Mauled. I've seen that video. Yeah, it, it was misery. Yeah, like they they got done dirty, humiliated, more than dirty. You know what I mean as human beings. And uh, yeah, man, it's just basically whatever they wanted to see. And I think now it's kind of like all right, you can kind of make your own opinion on it. Um, you kind of see the broad spectrum of what's going on, and then. Usually nine times out of ten, there's a couple pr- different perspectives on that topic from different articles, whether it yeah. be writers or journalists or whatever. For me, it's like my issue with the different times thing is like, yeah, we have the ability to research pretty quickly, but like now they also ask more. They want more 
they want more, you know, whatever, like the links, they want more, you know, yeah. cited citations. They want a lot more of that stuff. And then literally like to be publicly available for ridicule at all times, even if you're not really on social media, Yeah. because I was, I wasn't on social media that much, even when I was younger. And the fact that like people could still post about me and everybody else can see it. And that'll eventually either find its way back to me or I won't know, but people will act different around me. Yeah. You know, like the fact that that is even possible. Yeah. It is terrifying because yeah. that's the end of your world and in, in your mind. Yeah. And I feel like that's such a big thing is like growing up, you know what I mean? Growing up with that is like one of the hardest things to combat. And like, I can't even imagine trying to parent that, bro. Well, you know what? It made me realize something about high school was why it, why it always feels like it's the end of your life. It's because an average high schooler, when they're a sophomore or junior, is 16. Actually, no, it would be like a junior, senior. Yeah. Yeah, no. No, sophomore, junior. Sophomore, junior. sophomore, junior. 16, right? That means that one-fourth of your life has been spent from like eighth grade to junior year. And by the time you graduate, it is still pretty much one fourth of your life has been spent in that high school. Yeah. So those people are the people that you actually have active memories with because the older you get, the more those older memories fade away. Yeah. So at a point, these are like, this is your life. Yeah. This is all that you know. Yeah. Um. Anyway, very interesting thing. Yeah, that shit's crazy. I've never thought about it like that. Which is why it feels like your whole life is ending whenever stuff happens because it's, it's literally... It is all you know. Yeah, it's it literally yeah, it's literally all you know. Yeah, and I think that shit is like, like trying to tell. Like every time I see a youngin who's in high school, and I'm always like, bro, it it gets better. Not There's only more. Not only that, I tell every kid that I see in high school, bro, none of them bitches matter, bro. None of them, whether it be a male or a female, I'm talking to. I'm literally tell them maybe one percent of the people you talk to today will probably be there when you get out but i promise you none of them are one worth it two none of them honestly nobody you're in high school dog none of y'all mean shit none of you guys have done anything for the world you're still trying to figure out who the fuck you are you know what i mean and we're still trying to figure out who we are right now you know what i mean yeah so to think about it i try and tell people like in a high school stance or in a school stance like bro those people do not matter and like, you can tell them pretty much anything like i got told that same stuff they're gonna blow like, it off not even just that but like They'll some people take it into account and they'll hold on to it, but like they can only hold on to it so much whenever stuff's happening. Yeah, because it's just how the brain works. But yeah. Anyway, so that that's kind of like the different struggles is is there's not really like everybody is going through di is going to experience different struggles, and there are ways to avoid those things being worse or better. Um, and stop fucking blaming iPad kids. Don't fucking like. What about harness kids? <laughs> All of it falls on the parent. Um, you know what par being parasocial is? No. Parasocial is... Um, it's like... We just had Taryn on, right? Mm -hmm. It's like that of like... Imagine she has people who hit up... I know that she probably does. People who hit up her on OnlyFans and they talk to her like they know her. It's those people who like take the experience that they have with an online creator as like, I know this person, we're best friends or like, we're cool. And like, they're my friend. They know me. I know them. Some creepy that type shit. Of stuff. That's parasocial relationship. It is where you are getting dopamine. You are getting the exact like response of a, a real personable friendship through from, online, through online, through people you're not actually communicating with. The boys on Xbox 360. No, but the boys are people you're playing with. You talk to them. Oh, okay. It is people that you don't really have those interactions with, other than like once in a blue moon. Like so, for example, for Taryn, that would be them replying to a comment. Mm, I feel you. And that person instantly, and then that person's like, it's like you you seen the Amazing Spider-Man two? Yes. Um, with with Andrew Garfield, yeah. and yeah, and then. He saves Electro. Well, I can't remember his name right now. Um, Jamie Fox. Yeah, he saves Jamie Fox, and then um, Jamie Fox is like, "You remember me?" 
He's like, yeah, of course I remember you. You're a hero, yeah. right? And then Jamie Foxx is obsessed with Spider-Man. Yeah. And that's like his moment. And then the next time that they interact and he don't remember him fully. Yeah. It, he like freaks out. Yeah. He loses his shit. Jamie Foxx formed a parasocial relationship just to the very far extreme. But like that, those type of people exist. Those are the creepy fucking people who do crazy shit to, you know, streamers. Those are people who swap people and shit like that. Fuck. You. Hey, if you swap people, you're a piece of shit. Um, but like parasocial dynamics is like a really, really big part of social media and, and like the current state of things. And is one of the things that like, if this podcast was to ever blow up, I'm the most terrified of. Cause I want nothing more than to make sure I keep my, I, I want the people who listen and consume my content or, or, you know, find something valuable out of it to know that they're cared for and loved. It just so happens the love that I'm giving you and the love that I feel for you is not on the same scale as a love f- that a personal friend can have yeah. or a significant other can have. Yeah. Because I don't want you to have that relationship with this media to where you're like, I know that if I walked up to him, we'd be homies. Yeah. Because you don't know me. Facts. Um. Anyway, parasocial dynamics, super crazy. If you haven't looked into them, look into them. I promise it's so worth it and it'll blow your mind. It'll really make you go, maybe I need to step away from social media a little bit. Or And it's part of the reason why I'm like, I'm okay with it. Anyway, I think uh, we kind of jumped around a lot and we talked a lot more about yeah, our... Like this, how technology affected is, us. Yeah, but you know, we can kind of touch back on this conversation later. I think that it'll definitely be one that'll be interesting for us to touch on, especially when COVID's passed a little bit more and it's a little bit also, more normal. Also, if you just have a certain question where you're just like, hey, I want to know about this, you know? Um, Ask. But I think that we're going to come up because we're running a little long here. Hello. Um, I'm going to come up for, um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. kind of has to do with like my check-in, but, um, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people need to hear this. Um, remember why you started whatever the fuck you're doing. Um, a lot of people, especially me, um, I've been looking for like almost like the, uh, second wind of like motivation, you know what I mean? Or like. That like kick in the ass to like, all right, bro, I'm really going to get my shit started. And, you know, to my defense, it's not coming. Um, <clears throat> I think the biggest thing with that is you have to kick yourself in the ass. Um, you have to remind yourself why you started. So like with me, like when it comes to working out and shit like that, like I have to remind myself why I started. You know what I mean? Like because when I was really working out and like getting into my shit, like I was very clear headed. You know what I mean? down, Tatiana. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I was really clear-headed. I was really getting my shit together, and I got comfortable. I got very comfortable with, like, just the little progress I made. And it's like, nah, bro, that's not enough. Keep going. Remember why you started. You know what I mean? Um, I have to do the same thing with streaming. Um, and, and even this, you know what I mean? Like, remember why we started this. You know what I mean? Like, what, what our goal and what our intentions are with this. Um, and I think I've really just been, like, sitting with myself in my mind um, and just kind of really forcing myself to be like, all right, bro, like you got to get on your shit. You know what I mean? Um, and I think a lot of people need to hear it, but like, yeah, bro, if this, this is the sign telling you to remember why you started, whatever the fuck you're starting, whether it be school, whether it be a job, whether it be, you know, fitness, whether it be mental health, like remember why you started, whatever the fuck you started. You know what I mean? Because nine times out of ten, that'll kind of give you that boost of like, all right, bro, like I need to I need to kick myself in the gear. You know what I mean? Like I started this because of this and I was so passionate about it at this time. You don't have to necessarily find that same passion or like really like have the same fire for it. But like. I don't know, kind of you have to like force yourself to do it at some point. You know what I mean? Like if you really want to get something done, bro, you have to force yourself. You have to make yourself have the drive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause like, I don't really fuck with this guy. Cause like his whole outlook on women, but Andrew Tate. Oh, no, no, no. I don't stand for what he, what, what he talks such about. Such a fucking bad guy. Yeah. He's a terrible piece of shit. You know what I mean? But what he did say was that motivation is not real. Motivation comes and goes. Um, and mo- people get motivated when, like, something happens to them. Or, like, people get motivated when, like, 
like positive oh, reinforcement. Yeah, yeah, like I have to do this. You know what I mean? Like this happens, so this has to be the effect of it. Like this is gonna be my reason why I'm gonna do it. And then people lose motivation. So motivation is not real. He was like, it's drive. You know what I mean? Like Rit. Yeah, you have to want it. You know what I mean? He's like, that's your motivation is that you just want it. You have to be so obsessed with something that people literally call you insane because they just don't understand it. He said, I promise you, you'll get there. Everything else he says, I'm like, yeah. in, in through one ear, out the other. When I heard that, I was like, oh, he said something that. Yeah, that man, I see videos of that man and I'm like, Jesus, save me. I'm like, anyway, why, why? What about, what about you, dog? I'm going to talk about some movies. I want to talk. Okay, we're going to hit two notes. So I watched Black Phone, which is a new horror movie. It came out. Um, I watched it on my birthday with my mama, my sister, oh, yeah. and uh, my mom's wifey. Um, it is pretty good. My uh, So it's... Do you know anything about the movie? No. So it's basically about a guy who kidnaps kids. Um throws them in a basement. Nice. Um, and then is fucking Sick. creepy. Um, Hell yeah. So, and then in the basement, there is a, it, it's basically just a big concrete basement, one window that's barred, and then like a bathroom and a bed. And then there's a black phone on the wall that's like disconnected. Mm-hmm. Um, and the whole concept is basically that like ghosts talk to the kid who gets kidnapped through the phone. Um, and then they have kind of like some shining type elements where like the kid's sister get, can kind of get visions, a lot of stuff there. <laughs> okay. Um, it's pretty good. Honestly, it's one of the better horror movies that I've watched. Um, I think that the guy, I can't remember his name right now, who plays the grabber is fucking creepy. I think he does a really good job. Um, like a little too good of a job or? No. No. In the sense, like, he fits the role in the sense that, like, he's really good at, like, being creepy. That's fucked. Eh. Tough for that guy. No, I mean, you know, when you're playing a certain role, it's pretty easy. And most of his face is covered through oh, all okay. of the, mo- the movie, too. So he's really good at, like, the body language and That's everything. Um, and the way he, like, enunciates certain words is very fucking good. Um, there's one scene where he like asks the kid a question, the kid lies, and then he fucking throws a piece of a newspaper at him and you can see, and like currently most of his body's in shadow and you can see just the complete body demeanor change, which is like, like to like sadness. Um, and it's like, Oh, Oh, yeah. anyway, it's pretty good. Um, it's one of those like weird, uh, almost like Stephen King reminiscent. Like I wrote this because I read, the shining and it a lot. Um, but I needed something different type of vibes. So, uh, pretty good. I'd give it like a solid, like seven out of 10. How about seven, eight out of 10. Honestly, not bad. Um, actually definitely a seven. Um, (laughs) uh, and then I watched Nope recently, uh, which is the new Jordan Peele film. Uh, which I love Jordan Peele and his directing style. Um, this is, and there's a lot of things going on about this movie. A lot of people say it's really good. A lot of people say it's really bad. Um, yeah. I think that this is the worst of his films. So I think that Get Out and Us are definitely better. Um, but I also think that this is a really good movie still. And I think that it also very much is a topic that a lot of people don't really want to think about. Um, which is what a lot of his movies talk about. You know, Get Out was about racism. Us was about classism. And this movie's about, like, people willing to do anything to get rich and famous and make a quick buck, even if it means putting people safety at expense. Yeah. That type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so wealthism, <laughs> which is not a word. Um, Gotta love it. But I think it's really good. I think that it has one of, honestly, the creepiest scenes in horror movie that I've seen in a while. Um, and it's like really, really well shot. It also like does some really cool twists on some very stereotypical top, uh, like stereotypical, um, tropes. Have you ever seen, uh, Insidious? Yeah, I've seen Insidious. You know, like the devil hiding behind the dude? Yeah. I think that's probably one of the most shit yourself scenes. Oh dog, I got some movies to show you. I'm really I'm, okay. I've been on a big horror kick, which is not normal for me. Yeah, I'm really okay. I'm not a big horror guy. 
You I think watch horror movies with me. I think I smoke too much weed and do too much shrooms for me to watch. Honestly, you're movies. so right. That's anyway. Um, <laughs> I just got <laughs> anyway. Um, but I, if you are a fan of horror movies and or just if you're a fan of like thrillers and sci-fi, I definitely think it's worth the time. Thrillers. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Um, I definitely think that it, it definitely does some interesting takes and stuff that are uh, really unique. And if you like cinematography, it's definitely worth seeing. There's some really cool shots and some really cool use of um, practical effects in it. Anyway, that's kind of what I got. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> I'm about to be loud as shit. Yeah. Um, Brendan. Well, I'm glad that, uh, that you were able to watch your movies, though. Where can we... Where, where Thanks, man. Where can we find you? <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, a killer B, four twenty, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch. I couldn't think of the word. Um, yeah, and you can find. Oh, where can we find you, Jackson? You can find me at RQ on Twitch, TikTok, YouTube, and Twitter. Yeah, cause fuck Instagram. Yeah, fuck Instagram, but go follow our Instagram. Where can they find that at? <laughs> That's crazy. Um, our Instagram is coming up for Aircast. Um, our TikTok is up for Aircast. And then our Twitter is also up for Aircast. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And if you did, make sure to follow the podcast and rate the episode. And if you did really it, we appreciate it. And if you still do it. Yeah, <laughs> if you didn't, tell us why and what you want to hear. Or yep. shut the fuck up. Um... But otherwise, that'll do it for us. Peace, love, tranquility. See you next Wednesday. Hell yeah, brother. Bye. <laughs>